All right, welcome to a video edition of Unsupervised Learning. I'm Daniel Meisler, and today I'll be talking about secrecy, obscurity, and security. So what will I be arguing? First, I won't be arguing that security through obscurity is a good thing. It's definitely not. What I will be arguing is that most people have a deep misunderstanding regarding the concepts around security and obscurity, and that this matters because it's confusing new people in the infosec industry into making bad decisions. Security through obscurity is actually a very specific thing and doesn't apply in most situations, but rather than hitting you with a bunch of theory, it's best to actually look at some examples. Just sort of think through these as I go through them. First one, is a disguise a good security measure for the person who's wearing it? Or with frequency hopping, where the enemy doesn't know what frequency that you're using, is that a good idea? Or how about camouflage in war? Is that good security? How about AES-256? I think we all know that one is good security, but ask yourself why. How about storing sensitive files in a protected file cabinet? What about TLS? Is that good security? How about dead drops, where you drop something in a very large area and hopefully only your associate knows how to go and find it? Is that good security? Or running SSH on an alternate port, how about that? Or let's say everyone in some neighborhood puts their key under the planter by the door and this is common knowledge in the neighborhood. Is that good or bad? Or how about telling someone to change their routes when they travel to and from somewhere? Is that a good idea? Or what about using multiple helicopters or limos to hide a VIP? Is that security or is that not security? And finally, Caesar ciphers, like ROT13, where you rotate clear text by 13 characters to come up with the cipher text. How is that for security? So right now you might be a bit confused. You might be saying something like, well, I know secrets are bad because that's hiding things and hiding things is security by obscurity, supposedly. But I know these examples were good security practice. So how do I square these two feelings? Well, that confusion is exactly why I made this video. What I'm going to provide here is a unified theory that can actually tell the difference between good and bad secrecy in any situation. As usual, it's often good to start and synchronize on definitions. The definition I think is most powerful here is in the verb form from Oxford, which is to keep from being seen, concealing, or hiding. But here's the problem. There are actually two definitions of obscure or obscurity. There's another definition of obscurity that's used in some cases, but it's based on hiding the mechanism of how something works. And that brings us to something called Kirchhoff's principle, which talks about building secure systems. It says one ought to design systems under the assumption that the enemy will immediately gain full familiarity with them. Here's a modern and practical summary of the same concept in the form of advice. It basically says, Never design a system so that its security is based on people not knowing how it works. And this is the origin of the problem of calling everything security by obscurity. So while I was doing research for this video, I came upon a really cool blog that talked about the connection between OPSEC and security and obscurity. It's by a really smart guy I know called The Gruck, and it basically says that OPSEC wasn't a violation of security through obscurity because we weren't hiding how the system worked. I thought that was really interesting. So using that as a concept, I came up with what I think is a really solid unified theory for determining whether or not you have good or bad security. Basically, for something to be secure, you need to have both a process and a key. Requiring a process and a key unifies the two definitions of obscurity. Basically, you want to make sure that when you use obscurity, you're hiding the key portion and not how the system works. 
So if we go through our examples again, we can see how useful and universal this thing actually is. With disguise, we're not hiding how the system works. Everyone knows that people are making themselves look like someone else. The hidden information is what disguise they're actually using. That's the key. With frequency hopping, the enemy can know that we're using frequency hopping, but if they can't predict what channel will be used, then it's still good security. With camouflage, the enemy knows we're blending into the background, but they still have to hit everything to find us, which is basically brute force. So it's good security. The reason having everyone in a neighborhood put a key under a planter is bad security is because you don't need any more information once you know how that system works. So it fails the process plus key test. In this case, you're getting a key just because you know the process. A little confusing because it's actually a key in this case. With AES, the algorithm is completely known, but the attackers don't have the key to do decryption. It's also fine for people to know that you're storing sensitive files in a locked document vault because they still have to get into the vault. And using TLS is fine because it's using well-known protocols as well as keys that are kept secret. Dead drops are secure in sufficiently large spaces because even if you know there's a dead drop somewhere in a the city, there are too many places to look. So you're back to the process of brute force, basically. You know something's there, but you don't know where. Putting your SSH server on another port is an interesting one. Attackers can know that someone could put their server elsewhere, but if they want to use that knowledge, they have to put it in over 65,000 times as much effort to do what they're doing. So you're forcing the attacker to brute force the entire port space uh, because they don't have a key. Changing routes is also good security because even if you know someone is varying their routes, there are thousands or millions of different routes that are possible, which you would have to check in order to cover everything. So you're back to checking everywhere. You're back to brute force. ROT26 encryption or, or ROT13 encryption is bad security because once you know that you're using it or once the attacker knows that you're using it, you don't need any more information to get the clear text. And finally, decoys are good security because even if you know that one or more of the limos are decoys, you still have to multiply your attack by that amount or get lucky to be successful. So here are the takeaways. Obscurity can actually mean two different things. Hiding something from view and hiding how something works. The InfoSec community, especially new people, have come to think that anytime you hide something, it's security by obscurity. And this is not correct. Kirchhoff's principle just means hiding how something works as its only security layer is a bad idea. To know the difference between good and bad security, ask yourself if you need both a process and a key. It's okay to hide key material, but don't base your security on the enemy not knowing the mechanism. In short, don't let people new to security think that everything obscured, hidden, or secret is a bad idea. Friends don't let friends call everything security by obscurity.